From thou almighty king. Shall we all rise, please? Page 99, we praise thee, O God.
You may be seated. Well, good morning. Happy time change Sunday to you. I, I like this time change Sunday way better than the one in the spring. You, you know, the one in the spring, you, you go, now, uh, I think I missed an hour there someplace, you know. Uh, praise the Lord. Well, uh, the Lord is good to us and he's faithful to us in ways that we uh, maybe don't even understand. And uh, to continue to praise him, and in some ways we can never say hallelujah, uh, thine the glory. We never say that enough. Amen. And we just need to, we need to have that as a, mind, a mindset, as, a, as a, an attitude of life. And uh, even when everything is going against us, you say, well, you know, uh, what, what's the use? What's the purpose? And if nothing more, uh, we have been created for, to, to praise God and give glory to God. And, um, and, and as you do God's thing, by the way, we, we really don't understand a lot of spiritual things until we do it. It's in the doing that a lot of things are open to us. And, um, and it, so as we, as we go God's way and as we, as we uh, seek to yield, are, have you yielded your heart? As we seek to yield ourselves uh, to God, um, day by day, things uh, can and will be open to us. And, uh, and we'll be able to see more of the unseen realm. And uh, we're talking a little bit about that this morning as uh, we uh, continue in our study in the uh, book of Daniel, the, from the prophet Daniel. And so if you'd like to turn in your Bible, if you have a Bible with you, or if not, pull one uh, from the pew. And uh, uh, to Daniel chapter 4. And um, this is something of a testimony of... Uh, he wasn't Jewish, he was not a Hebrew, he was not something, uh, someone you say, well, why is his testimony in the Bible? But you know, it, it's not just uh, the people that say, well, we're God's people. You know, I wanna be, I wanna be God's person. How about you? You know, are we God's people? Not only should God's people be praising God, but really what he desires is for everyone on earth and to discover the truth and reality of it. And you, maybe you see a little bit of the reality, and maybe you've got more questions than you have a sense of that reality, but stick in there. Stick with God, yield your, yield your heart to God. Seek to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then seek to love, love others as yourself, all right? Daniel chapter 4 is about a testimony from King Nebuchadnezzar. And um, before, before we read that, I just want to read uh, a number of verses uh, from the New Testament. Uh, as we go to the Old Testament, I want to connect it to the New Testament. And uh, so here are some verses from the New Testament. You can listen or you can try to follow along. Uh, I got these printed out, so I'm not flipping pages on this, so I'll do it a little bit quicker than usual. Uh, Matthew chapter 18, verse 4. <laughs> Jesus says, Whoever, Matthew 18, verse 4, Whoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Humble, like a child, great in the kingdom. Then also in Matthew chapter uh, 23, Matthew chapter 23, verse 12, Jesus again says, whoever shall exalt himself 
shall be brought down. So you put your mind and your life above the things of God. By the way, people do that. Are you doing that? If you do that, you'll be brought down. Okay, but listen to this. Whoever, whoever sh um, shall exalt himself shall be brought down, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. <laughs> Ooh. Lord, help me learn that one. Help me learn that. James chapter 4, verse 6. James 4, verse 6. God gives more grace, and so he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. You humble your heart, you know what? Grace is going to come into your life more than before. More than before. James 4.10, same, same uh, uh, chapter, James 4, but verse 10, it says, Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Now you can humble yourself in your own sight and humble yourself in the sight of others. But if you do it to God, you humble yourself before God. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he, that's God, will lift you up. And then finally, uh, 1 Peter 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 5 and 6. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 5 and 6. It says, and really starting in the middle of verse 5, it says, Yes, all of you be subject to one another. In other words, have a submitted heart to one another. You submit your heart. Yeah, submit your heart to God, but submit your heart to others. Be subject to one another and be clothed. It's like putting on a coat or a, sh a shirt or a blouse or some other, some other piece of clothing. Be clothed with humility. Are you clothed with humility? Yeah, well, why, why am I clothed? Because I don't think you really want to see what's underneath. I, we put the clothes on and it looks better with clothing. Well, this clothing is really good clothing. Be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud. So you get into a proud thing, I get in, in, into a pride thing. Guess what? God resists us. You ever feel like God's resisting? Check the humility part out. He resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your great goodness to us, that your hand is upon us, that your spirit is available to teach us. There's so much we don't understand. We think we know a lot, but there's so much we don't understand. And we have trouble seeing into the unseen realm. Lord, uh, if you don't reveal it to us, if you don't open it to us, those things stay concealed. Those things stay hidden. Oh God, we want to see more of you and more of your kingdom and more of your graciousness and more of your goodness and mercy and loving kindness, Lord, in our lives. Lord, we want that, that it may go well with us. What a challenge, Lord. And yet, Lord, we don't, if, we, if we're with you, we don't face that challenge by ourselves. Help us to realize that this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. We're talking about visions. Nebuchadnezzar had in chapter 4 here, and we're going to get to that. Um, in a moment. Uh, but what is a vision? Vision is when, when the Lord shows us something and there are open visions. That is, and as I understand, I've never had this, where what you see 
physically is replaced with something else by God and you look into, the, into heavenly things. Uh, I believe there is such a thing. I think uh, possibly the, the book of Revelation is, is just an, uh, a writing of, of something like that. All right? But then there are other openings. And there are things that God shows people whether in the, in, the, in the view inside their mind or in their imagination or uh, some other way, however God would want to do it, where God will open things to people. One, one of the amazing people in history I consider amazing was the Quaker George Fox. And he, I think he had one or two of those every day. George Fox, he was one of the founders of what, of, of what has become the uh, Quakerism. Uh, but he was a sincere believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said that there is no salvation in any other. A lot of Quakers don't say that nowadays. They lot, I've said before, they lost their, Quakers lost their quake, you know. Um, and and uh, he, all the, he had all these openings from God. Have you ever had God opened something to you? Uh, two stories before we get to Daniel. One of them has to do with my grandmother. My grandmother, Christoffel, she was, talk about a peculiar lady, yeah, she would, she would go, go to town without her false teeth, you know? I can, such, so many strange things I can think about my grandmother, Christoffel. She was born uh, about 20 years after the Civil War, my grandmother was in the eight, 1880s. And um, she died in the spring, uh, I think it was March of 1973. So she's been gone quite a while, all right. But I, I clearly remember her. And one of the things that uh, is, is sort of startling to me and my family is the fact that here's my grandmother and uh, for, uh, uh, for 10 years, uh, she is nearly completely blind. All right, the last 10 years of her life. And for most of that 10 years, she was uh, nearly completely deaf at the same time. And you know, if you yell, just almost yelled at the top of your voice, she might hear you, she might. And uh, pretty much was confined to bed. She was in a nursing home. Lu Luann Nursing Home in uh, Napanee, Indiana. And uh, one of the things uh, before her passing, she kept saying, oh, you know, and, and she would have her eyes open. She couldn't see, but she'd have her eyes open and she was looking around uh, as though she were looking around. And, and then she would be muttering and talking and like she was talking to somebody, you know? The only thing that the, f uh, the family could discern what she was saying was this. And she said this repeatedly. It's time to take the tent down and go home. It was mystified the whole family, it mystified all the nurses at the nursing home there and, and uh, uh, take the tent down and go home. Well, and my, my aunt, my Aunt Ruth, who was, all, my grandmother was Mennonite and my, my Aunt Ruth was also Mennonite all of her life. And she said, well, the only thing I can think of is is the uh, Mennonite Conference. We always held that in a big tent, you know, a couple thousand people in a big circus type tent. And uh, maybe, she's, maybe she's reliving her past going to the conference meetings. She's really enjoyed that and singing, you know, and, and, uh, and hearing the, the preachers and everything. Maybe she's reliving, it's time to take, take the conference tent down and uh, go home. And, um, uh, eventually my grandmother passes away and I come home from from college I was in college at the time for her, her funeral and uh, my foster cousin um, was t talking to me about this at the cemetery uh, at my grandmother's burial and and of course there's a little tent there <laughs> you know over the grave uh, well it's uh, time to take the tent down and go home and uh, her name is Kathy I said to Kathy well, that's a good interpretation of that. Fast forward about 10 years. 
I even get goosebumps with this. <laughs> I was reading this passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And this is, I believe, the, the opening my grandmother was happening before her passing. And she was talking about it. We know that if our earthly tent that we dwell in, this body, if it's destroyed, we have a building of God not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. In our body now we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly house. For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened, not that we should be unclothed, but so that what is mortal might be swallowed up of life. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. We walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and even prefer to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. My grandmother, yep, it was time to take the tent down and really, really, truly go home. She did, praise God. A second opening that I would like to talk about before we uh, get to Daniel here is, um, is something that happened to me when I was a very young Christian. I was probably um, consecrated to the Lord December 1st, 1972, and this was probably within a year of that date. And uh, in my prayer time, so I'm, I'm in my, my early 20s, all right, and I'm praying. Um, at that time, I'm, uh, I have, have a job as uh, a director of Christian Ed, that is a student minister, <laughs> that's code language for student minister, director of Christian Ed at a church in Eaton, Ohio called Eaton, church, Eaton United Church of Christ. Eaton United Church of Christ. Cross town from the Church of the Brethren where Craig Smith uh, was at for years and years, all right, our, our district executive. And, um, but I, you know, so I had this job, uh, the student minister job at this church, and uh, it, was, it was a big church, and they would have between 200 and 400 on a Sunday morning. And uh, <clears throat> this is a picture of the street looking east on the street, and the church on, right there on the right-hand side that's the Presbyterian Church, but down the street you can see a bell tower, and that bell tower is the United Church of Christ. And between the two churches, there's this alley. Show the, show the next picture. There, these church, two churches right next to me, and they were very competitive, stealing members from each other, you know. It was quite a deal. They had all kinds of, you know, it was a county seat, this little town was, Eaton, Ohio. Uh, it was a county seat for Preble County. and. All the politicians were in one, one or the other of these churches. And uh, on the left side is United Church of Christ. That was a church where, where your pastor was a student minister for three years. And uh, um, I, I just noticed it was, it was almost more political. Now, I don't remember which one it was, which one had the Democrats and the other one had most of the Republicans, had judges, had county officials going to these churches, you know, and they were really dignified, you know. And in fact, classmates at school said, how did you ever get involved in that church? And I go, oh no, I guess God did it. I mean, it was, it was, it was a well, I would not have done well financially had I not had that job as a director of Christian Ed. Mainly, mainly a youth director, but I had other responsibilities. As I was praying, and it was during this time, and then this was the church where I would be every Sunday, all right, and uh, I, I helped out as worship leader uh, for three years at this church. And um, I was praying, I'm, I'm letting this sort of come back to me. I was praying, and I saw th the view that you have on the screen there is the view 
that came to me in my prayer except for this thing. Instead of being daytime, it was night. I was standing like this across the street looking at that building. And of course, having grown up in a little country church, I thought this, was, this building was fabulous, you know. I mean, yeah, it was, I mean, it was quite a, quite a thing, this building. And uh, as I was praying, and I was just thanking God that I had a job there, <laughs> I had some income, and, but it was, I, I learned more about ministry as a student from my relationship with these people in that building than I did at the seminary. It was hands-on stuff, and, I, and someday I want to go back there and say, thank you for what you did. You got me through college. <laughs> really, really, really. But in prayer, here I am in the dark. I could see this picture, and at night they had, right behind the, the sign there in front of that big stained glass window, there was a big light that lit up the whole, the whole front and that bell tower and everything. And so I was praying, and then in, in, as, in the opening, what was open to me, I saw that building become f riddled with cracks, and, it, and the bricks began to fall apart, and suddenly the whole thing just collapsed. I tell you what, I, you know, I go, oh no, you know, is, uh, you know, was God, is God warning me of something, you know? Now, in fact, I, later I even told this to, to the minister there, and, and uh, he, he was sort of startled. He'd go, oh yeah, well, uh, let's hope that's not from God, you know? Um, but there's more to it. In fact, uh, and this, I don't think this was the same day. Later on, I was praying about that and, I think about, and thinking about all the rubble and the de debris of that collapsed building. And I look closer in my mind. Okay, this is in my mind. This is not an open vision. This is in my mind. I look in and I see some of the stone, like from the stones around the windows and some of the stonework there. Those stones were neatly piled up together and the stones were like they're pulsing or like they were really alive. The stones themselves were living. And right on top of all those stones, there was a cross about so big. And all of that was shining the glory of God in the middle of the night. And while there was all this debris, yet there was something amazing and something significant there. Let me read you some verses on that. Because again, it was only years later that I began to sort of put this together. It says, uh, as newborn babes desire the milk of the word, now that you've tasted the Lord is gracious. As you come to him, as he is a living stone, rejected indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. And you also, as living stones, are built up into a spiritual house. In him, and then that's from First uh, Peter, here's from Ephesians. In him, the building is, is properly fit together. It grows into a holy temple to the Lord. In him, even you are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. And that has stayed with me my whole life, that there is, there is a side of all of this that is material and that is, that is, that is really temporary. But there is a part of what we, what we call the Christian faith. We need to distinguish the part that's eternal. Thank you, Lord. By the way, when somebody says, oh, well, you have visions like that anymore, I go, well, I'm older now. Uh, somebody says, uh, well, uh, 
You know, isn't that a sign of maturity that you have visions? I go, well, I'm not sure. Sometimes, I heard a guy say one time that he saw, he had a vision of an angel in technicolor and whatever else, and I go, you know, maybe, maybe if we are really maturing like we're supposed to, we'd, then God doesn't have to do these things. And that, you know, I remember what I said, I was really young, I didn't know this stuff in the Bible. If you, get, if you got the Word of God, <laughs> He can use the Word to open it to you. Let's look at Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar here in Daniel chapter 4. And uh, let's plow into it. Nebuchadnezzar the king, to all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth. By the way, does that include you or you living in a different universe. <laughs> it's even to you. Nebuchadnezzar is even addressing you. Peace be multiplied to you. I thought it good to declare the signs and wonders that the Most High God has worked for me. Now, this is a pagan king believing in all kinds of pagan, Persian pagan stuff. All right, but he's learned something. What does it take for the, uh, the ungodly to find out godly stuff? It takes God's working, right? Well, pray for God's work. You know, if you go, I got a ways to go, well, pray that God help you. And he opened to you so you can understand this stuff. Verse 3 says, how great are his signs how mighty his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. He, see, he can see, he can see that God has a kingdom. And it's an everlasting kingdom. His dominion is from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house and flourishing in my palace. And I saw a dream which made me afraid and the thoughts on my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore I issued a decree to bring all the wise men of Babylon before me that they might make known to me the interpretation of the dream. Then the mag magicians and the astrologers and the Chaldeans and the soothsayers and yada 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 came in and I told them the dream, but they did not make known to me its interpretation. But at last, Daniel came before me. His name is Belshazzar, according to the name of my gods. In him is the spirit of the holy God. And I told the dream before him, saying, Belshazzar, chief of the magic uh, magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy God is with you and no secret troubles you, explain to me the visions of my dream that I have seen and its interpretation. These were the visions of my head while I was on my bed and I was looking and behold a tree in the midst of the earth and its height was great. And the tree grew and became strong. Its height reached to the heavens. And it could be seen to the ends of all the earth. Its leaves were lovely, its fruit abundant. And in it was food for all. The beast of the field found shade under it. And the birds of the heaven dwelt in its branches. And all flesh was fed from it. And I saw the vision of my head while I was on my bed and there was a watcher, a watcher, that's the way it's translated here, a watcher, a holy one. By the way, always ask, where, where is God in this story and where, where is Jesus? This, this looks like Jesus to me. Just like in the, the fiery furnace, uh-huh. Here he is again, a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven. 
Yeah, that's what he did. Old Testament foreshadowing of what Jesus did in coming to Bethlehem. He cried aloud and said thus, Chop down the tree and cut off its branches. Strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the beasts get out from under it and the birds from its branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump and roots in the earth. Bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let him graze with the beast on the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from that of a man and let him be given the heart of a beast and let seven times pass over him. And this decision by the decree of the watchers, by the sentence and by the word of the holy ones in order that the living may know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men gives it to whomever he will and sets over it the lowest of men. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now you, Belshazzar, that's Daniel, declare its interpretation since all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known to me the interpretation, but you are able for the spirit of the holy God is in you. Then Daniel, whose name is Belshazzar, was astonished for a time and his thoughts troubled him. So the king spoke and said, Belshazzar, do not let the dream or its interpretation trouble you. Belshazzar answered and said, My Lord, may the dream concern those who hate you and its interpretation concern your enemies. You know, th this is may maybe more than what we w really want to think about. This may not be a good thing. The tree that you saw, which grew and became strong, whose height reached to the heavens and which could uh, uh, be seen by all the earth, whose leaves were lovely and its fruit abundant, and which was food for all, under which the beast of the field dwelt, in whose branches the birds of the heavens had their home. It is you, O king, who have grown and become strong. For your greatness has grown and reaches to the heavens and your dominion to the end of the earth. And insomuch as a king saw a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven and saying, chop down the tree and destroy it, but leave its stump and its roots in the earth, bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let him graze with the beast of the field till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king. And this is the, de the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord the King. They shall drive you from men. Your dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen. They shall wet you with the dew of heaven and uh, seven times shall pass over you till you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. And inasmuch as they gave the command to leave the stump of the tree, your kingdom shall be assured to you after you come to know that heaven rules. Therefore, O king, let my advice be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by being righteous and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. 
and perhaps there may be a lengthening of your prosperity. All of this came up on King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, he was walking about the royal palace of Babylon, and the king spoke saying, is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty? And remember the words of Jesus. <laughs> the king doesn't know what Jesus is saying. While the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken, the kingdom has departed from you. By the way, pride and arrogancy can be brought down that quick. You need, you know, when we say to fear the Lord, it's not, it's not that we, we should be terrified of God or talking to Him, but, but, if, but if, if we dwell in sin, if we dwell in an exalted mind ourselves, ah, you know what? In the face of a, a powerful God, now you don't want to be there. I don't want to be there. Verse 32, they shall drive you from men. Your dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen and seven times shall pass over you till you know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. And that very hour, the word was fulfilled concerning Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from, from men and ate grass like oxen. His body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair had grown like eagle's feathers and his nails, that is fingernails, toenails, like bird's claws. There's this powerful king out there. Uh, there he is. There he is. You exalt yourself and look out. At the end of time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes to heaven. My understanding returned to me, and I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever. He brought his heart down and praised the God of heaven. You do it. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion. His kingdom is, is from generation to ge generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. No one can restrain his hand or say to him, what have you done? And at the same time, my reason returned to me and for the glory of my kingdom, my honor, my splendor returned to me. My counselors and nobles uh, re resorted to me. I was restored to my kingdom and excellent majesty was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven all whose works are truth and his ways justice. And those who walk in pride, he is able to put down. Let the vision of Nebuchadnezzar inform your heart and life. lest it be seven years of you eating grass or the equivalent thereof. What, what, it, what is the tough thing? Now there's, there can be all kinds of reasons why tough things happen, but one of them can be this thing that Nebuchadnezzar was dealing with. Let God give you the vision 
of him and his kingdom and what it means for you to, to be connected rightly to his kingdom. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this day that your Holy Spirit can touch our lives, change us, trans transform us. There might even be some here who do not know you because they've lifted up their soul to vanity. Lord, somehow, some way, may they find that place before you, a reality before you, and where, where Lord, where we, all of us, every single one of us, exalt your name just like Nebuchadnezzar ended up. Lord, that's the important thing, how we end up. Oh God, be Lord of our ending. And Father, we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us continue to honor God by giving of tithes and offerings as our ushers come forward. And uh, we have special music today brought to us by Linda Kiter on the organ.
Thank you, Linda. Shall we all rise for the doxology? We dedicate this offering to you. May it help the work of your church to other parts of the world. Bless us now as we continue this morning in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before you're seated, let us greet one another this morning. announcements is there anyone any specific announcements that uh, anyone would like to share <coughs> there are many in your bulletin if you could read through those um, on the announcement page uh, yes please if you want to wait for the microphone a minute thanks um, I was just wanting to let those who were interested in Joanne's jewelry um, that uh, we will be showing that at uh, Bethel United Church on uh, Bethel Church Road this coming Saturday uh, after we learned that there would be none here. So uh, we'll be there for the day and uh, if anyone can't get there and want to see it, they're welcome to come uh, call me and we can do it at church or in our home. Thank okay, you. Great. Thank you. Brian. This is just a, a quick reminder for the deacons. We have a meeting on uh, Friday night. So um, be in prayer and, and also uh, looking forward for your participation and also for personnel nominating as well. Thanks. Okay, take note that the Harvest Festival is this Saturday and that uh, Christmas shoeboxes will be collected next Sunday, so don't, for, no, don't forget to bring those. Bob? Uh, this is Bob Beatty here. Just to uh, give you an update on our uh, beans program for the uh, uh, Christmas boxes for the cluster. Uh, we have 140, so we're off to a good start. So uh, keep up the good work. How many Thank do you. you need, Bob? Say that again. How many do you need? 380. Okay, so bring in those beans. And that's the 14.5 ounce okay. uh, beans. Thank you. Thanks. I'll now open it for time of sharing, if anybody would like to share.
The uh, flowers this morning are uh, in loving memory of Donald Kovach, presented by his daughters Beth and Nancy and family. Oh, I have to use this. Good morning. Uh, I'm putting it at my mouth. Uh, I can't miss this opportunity to tell anyone that was not here last night for Grip the Rock that I think you should have been here. Amen. We had a, a service that filled this sanctuary with the most glorious feeling of, of God's presence because our brother Mark McMahon gave a testimony that right now thinking about it makes me want to cry, it was so beautiful. Uh, we are so blessed to have people like that in our church that are willing to share the things that God is doing in their lives. And, and I just hope that you'll start coming out because I find that a great service to attend. Thank you. Good morning. I just want to thank you again for praying for my grandson Stanley. He has uh, an appointment tomorrow morning around eight, nine o'clock. You might want to think kindly of him and say a little prayer. He's getting rods out of his arm and uh, he's been very good. He's a very good little guy. Uh, he broke both arms. He has two rods, one in each arm. And they'll come out tomorrow. He's doing really, really good. So thank you for your prayers. We, we both believe that the best situation can only be established with God's prayers. Uh, it doesn't matter what the situation is, it'll be the best it can be if, you, if we just uh, include God in it. Thank you. Thank you. We'll remember you tomorrow morning. Hi, I have a praise. Um, my grandpa was at a yard sale and a car lost control and someone said that it looked like it was like um, less than six inches away from him, but luckily it missed him. So that's my praise. Praise God. Thank, Thank you. Let's pray together and um, rejoice in the Lord, but also cast your care on him, the scripture says, because he cares for you. And so uh, pay attention to what uh, burdens your heart, um, the things that, um, that you need to pray about. And uh, let's pray together uh, in this place, in one accord unto the Lord. Father in heaven, hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah to your wonderful grace to us by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah for the redeeming work of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer. Um, by his shed blood, we have been redeemed to God. And uh, Lord, we our, our, our access to your throne is because of that. Not because of any righteousness we have done, but according, Lord, to his work on the cross and his mercies, Lord, uh, gaining access for us. Father in heaven, we pray for family and friends. We pray, Lord, for um, the ones that have lost loved ones recently. We pray for uh, the Trojan um, family and, and in their uh, uh, time of memorial today, their meal. We just pray your blessing on them. Thank you, Father, for, for the love you have shown both Jeanette and her family. Father, we pray for uh, others that have lost loved ones, and we pray, Lord, for these that are uh, dealing with very, um, some with very serious health challenges. Um, be, be that God to them that brings hope and strength and renewing. Be healer to their bodies and their minds. And in the, in the midst of, of fear and uh, unbelief, help their unbelief. 
and may your love uh, banish fear. Do that, Father, by your spirit. And Father, we pray um, that uh, in the days and weeks ahead, uh, both us individually and us as a congregation would continue to be faithful unto your calling over our lives every day. Father, we pray for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the closing hymn this morning is number 502. Would you turn in the blue hymnal number 502? Shall we rise? Thank you, Father, that as we depart from this place, your presence is with us. And your promise, we, we, we ask, Lord, you fulfill your promise, but your promise is you'll never leave us or forsake us. So we can ask for it, but Lord, you say that it's true, already true. You'll never leave us or forsake us. May we have boldness in our Christian life with that knowledge 
as we live our daily life, our daily walk. Father, we pray it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Amen.